morning. So, uh, I saw, I think it was a commercial or, you know, on, on YouTube or something. I don't remember exactly what. Um, but basically, some uh, mega corporation said, there's never been a better time to sell your house. Um, and I thought that was fascinating, right? Like, that, that this massive corporation um, is trying to get people to sell. And um, why? <laughs> it begs the question, why, right? And, and objectively, like, prices are very high right? Um, and so, I mean, yeah, maybe, maybe it's a good time to sell. Um, uh, and you know, in, in my family, we've, we've talked about selling, right? And like, wow, you know, I mean, uh, we've appreciated a lot of value, you know, over the years on our home, you know, maybe we can sell and, and lock some of that in and, um, you know, and maybe, you know, upgrade. And then we look at the housing market and I mean, really there's not a lot of inventory out there. I don't know if any of you have been house shopping recently. And then, of course, you, you sell high in, you know, a, a ridiculously overheated market, then you buy high in a ridiculously overheated market, right? Um, and so, I mean, like, are, are we really actually going to get any, um, you know, any upgrade on, on the investment just by selling and rebuying now? Um, and so, so far, the, the calculation on that's been no, right? Um, but it, the, the ad, like, it just, it, it left a bad taste in my mouth, right? So you're you're a, a big multi-million dollar, billion dollar company, like BlackRock, right? There's this giant investment company that's been just buying up all this property. And they're trying to tell you, now is a great time to sell, right? Is it? right? Is BlackRock going to be making bad investments? Maybe, right? I mean, there's been some huge too big to fail companies that, I mean, just were horribly mismanaged and tanked the economy. Sure. But why are they buying in a seller's market? Right? Like, what do they know? Right? Like, is now a great time to sell? They seem to think now is a great time to buy. Right? Uh, I mean, and if they're going out and just buying up all these property, again, in an overheated market, like, what does that say about their outlook over the next five, ten years, right? Um, and, I mean, you can get into, you know, conspiracy theory territory about, you know, them trying to create a, you know, permanent renter class. Um, and then, you know, American oligarchs becoming kind of this, you know, land-holding elite. Um <laughs> Maybe there's something to that. Um, you know, hashtag World Economic Forum. <laughs> hashtag Great Reset. Um, you know, it, hey, I just... They, they don't have our best interests in mind. I, I, I mean, re regardless of whether or not there's anything nefarious going on, I mean, they are out to make a buck, right? And, I mean, if it was really a good time for us to sell, then it would not be a great time for them to sell right like what you know giant you know investment company uh is gonna just gobble up assets that are going to like rapidly depreciate when this housing bubble bursts right um you know and maybe it's just because they're they're flush with cash right now because uh you know two-thirds of all money in the u.s economy was created in the last couple of years uh and so <laughs> you know it, it's easy to get capital and buy things up um you know and they've got a 5 10 15 year outlook on on these investments um you know it, I, I saw a meme uh somebody you know was like hey i put up and it's the little stick figures like hey i got paid uh, and the government shows up and is like, ah, oh, you know, I'll take some of that for income tax. And, um, and they're like, hey, I invested what I had left and, and got a nice return on a smart investment. It's like, and the government's like, yeah, oh, I'll take a little bit of that too. Um, it's like, hey, I'm, I'm going to go buy this thing. It's like, hey, but you're going to pay a little more on sales tax. It's like, oh, well, I'm, I'm going to save the little tiny bit that I have left. It's like, yeah, no, you know, money printer go brr. And he's the, the, Uncle Sam hat wearing stick figures lighting that last dollar bill on fire. Um, you know, and inflation is this stealth tax, right? Um, 
you know, and so it, is it any wonder that uh, the people with the, you know, inside knowledge are getting out of cash and into, you know, assets like property um, when the future of the dollar seems as uncertain as ever, right? And so, you know, again, do they do they really have your best interest at heart when they're saying, no, it's a great time to sell, you know, when in that just classic used card salesman voice? Um, no, I, I don't think so. Um, I, I heard a story a while back or, or read a story or something. I forget exactly where, but basically the, the, the idea was you know, somewhere back around 1950, let's say, um, you know, somebody put um, 30 grand in cash into a little box and hid it in the walls, right? And then uh, it was discovered, you know, sometime recently. So we're talking, you know, 60, 70, 80 years later, um, you know, and hey, you know, kudos for the family. They found 30 grand worth of cash or whatever. Um, but adjusted for inflation, <laughs> You go back in, in 1940s or 1950s uh, dollars, like 50 grand, like you're buying houses maybe, plural, or at least house with 30, 50 grand, whatever it was. And now you can get yourself a nice car, you know. Um, it's, it's, certainly nobody's going to stick their nose up at it, but boy, you know, I mean, if you go from house to car with the same amount of money in... A generation or two, you know. At, what what are supposed to be people, you know, who don't have a whole lot to begin with, uh, do with the little bit they're about, you know, trying to save for retirement, uh, for their kids' college, for you know, maybe to have a little something to give to their grandkids. Um, by the time that they pass on and, and make their life a little bit easier and set them up for success. Um, you know, it, monetary policy, I know it's, it's boring, um, but when you, when you put it in concrete terms like that, like even if you put your money in a metal box and hide it in the walls, like Uncle Sam or the powers that be or whoever it is, the invisible hand of the money printer uh, and <laughs> reaches through time and space and, you know, <laughs> well, how did Saruman put it in Lord of the Rings? Pierces stone, metal, and flesh, right? To get their hands in that pocket, right? Into that, that little can that you set aside for your grandkids, right? Um, and it, it is inescapable. I mean, as long as you are in US dollars, right? Um, and so what do you do? You know, I, 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 there was somebody, a coworker, when, when I first got hired, um, told me that they, they'd spent a bunch of money on silver, right? And I don't know if it was like junk silver or, you know, like, uh, you know, minted coins or, or, or what, but, um, you know, and they were trying to pay off their credit card, I think it was, um, you know, to, to, uh, cover the, the silver that they bought, you know, I don't know how that's appreciated in the, the last, you know, however many years, um, <laughs> you know, but I mean, do you, do you put your money in precious metals? You know, I mean, if you don't have enough cash to buy, you know, property, like what else do you buy? Do you buy cryptocurrency? Um, you know, and again, not a financial advisor, um, not giving investment advice, just kind of talking about the realities of, you know, um, how we get fleeced, right? Uh, you know, cryptocurrency, I mean, it, it has a lot of, a lot of positives to it. And again, if you haven't, if you haven't looked into it, um, you know, even just at a, as a place to park your money, um, you know, it, when was the last time you got any appreciable interest rate uh, on a savings account at the bank, right? Um, there are some countries that actually have negative interest rates. Like, they will charge you money, uh, and depending on the kind of account you have in the U.S. too, like with service fees and stuff like that, they will charge you money for the pleasure of holding on to your, your money, right? <laughs> Which is insane, right? Here, have an interest-free loan. In fact, I'm going to pay you to go gamble with my money bank, thank you. 
Um, <laughs> it's insane, right? Um, but um, certain cryptocurrencies, depending on where you um, you know put your money, again, you, you can get staking rewards of up to like you know eight percent on some of these, which you know if inflation is truly what they say it is, you know five to eight percent right now. Uh, depending on the measure, um, you know, you're at least breaking even over time uh, if you, you know, put your money into this cryptocurrency just just based on the, the staking rewards, the 8% annually, right? Never mind if the actual cryptocurrency appreciates over time in a way that dollars do not, right? And I mean, people talk about Bitcoin, for example, as, as digital gold, right? Um, so there's a finite amount of it. Like it's it's hard coded into the blockchain that there will only ever be, I think 21 million Bitcoin total, right? So, I mean, it's it's kind of inflation proof, right? And I mean, you can subdivide Bitcoins down to, I think eight decimal points, um, you know, and so the, the smallest unit of measure of Bitcoin is called a Satoshi. I think that's eight decimal points. I'm, I'm not sure on that, fact check me. Um, so, I mean, there, there's a lot of potential liquidity there, but ultimately, like, it is by design scarce. And I, again, yes, it, it is based purely on code and raw computing power um, by Bitcoin miners, right, who are using their processing power to uh, secure and, and validate the, the ledger on the Bitcoin um, blockchain, right? But um, that that is more concrete than, again, if, if we're talking about fiat currency, this is my opinion, but I mean, the story about the guy who put the 10 of 30 grand in the wall, right, uh, over 30 years, if you're losing five, six, seven, eight percent annually uh, through the invisible hand of inflation, right, versus a, a by design scarce, you know, asset, um, which you know, can only become deflationary as, you know, people lose the private keys to their, their Bitcoin and it becomes permanently lost or, you know, what have you. There's, you know, the theoretical maximum 21 million Bitcoin will never really be in circulation because, you know, a lot of people mined it in the early days, didn't know it was going to be worth anything and lost the flash drive uh, that their Bitcoin was on. There's a great episode of Big Bang Theory, um, based on that too. If you're not a fan, don't worry about it. But I mean, yeah, that, that's the point, right? There's, I mean, there's a whole bunch of people who are like, oh, Bitcoin hit, you know, $300 and I've got, you know, however many thousands of Bitcoin. Holy shit, you know, <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be worth anything. I was just doing it for a laugh, you know. Uh, I, I dabbled a little bit in mining back in 2017, the last time Bitcoin peaked. Um, and I'm like, eh, you know, I mean, I'm kind of worried about burning up my my GPU on my computer and um, maybe I'll stop you know and I mined for a few months I'm like there's little bits of you know uh, Bitcoin trickling in you know and it's like uh, the, the amount of money I'm paying just for the electricity is is exceeding how much I'm earning on this right now uh, and then fast forward to uh, 2020 2021 um, and I'm like, I'm here, oh, Bitcoin hit $50,000. I'm like, wait. So, and so that that few bucks worth of Bitcoin that I'd mined in 2017 was worth a couple hundred bucks uh, a couple years later. And God, you know, had I continued just to mine a minimal amount of Bitcoin, um, you know, I was worried about burning up the, the graphics card on my computer. Uh, I started mining again, you know, this is, a year ago, a little more than, um, and I mean that the amount I've mined is already more than paid for the card, right? Like if I needed to replace it, I could just replace it if I burned it up. Um, but for, based on all the research I've done, it, it's actually not, not really that damaging to the card. And I mean, it's in an old machine now that, that I've since, you know, uh, bought a new one. And so the, the old machine, I mean, that really all it does is sit on a shelf and mine Bitcoin, um, 24 seven, uh, which again, it, it's, you know, not a lot, but you, you think about that again, that, that can of cash in the wall, at least, you know, the, the U S federal reserve and U S government money printer can't touch it. Right. 
Um, it's not gonna get inflated away. And maybe Bitcoin will just crash one day and hit zero. I don't know. Uh, like, I'm not telling people, put all your money into Bitcoin. Uh, and I'm not just sitting here trying to sell Bitcoin. I'm not getting any monetary value out of talking about it. I just think it's interesting. Um, but I mean, you gotta do something, right? Uh, and I think the, the whole Ukraine crisis has really kind of highlighted um, what a powerful tool it is, right? I mean, there was people sending millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin in aid to Ukraine. Uh, and then Russia turned around and said like, oh yeah, we are locked out of the international payment system. So among other things, they, you know, uh, made Bitcoin easier to use, I think, if, if I'm remembering the reporting right. Uh, whereas prior to, Russia was kind of anti-Bitcoin, but like, hey, you know, when you get locked out, um, then what else are you gonna do, right? And, that, and that's the thing about the network is it's highly decentralized, right? So nobody can just lock you out of the system, even if you're gross, right? Um, and, and certainly we've seen that, and I think I've talked about that before. Um, but I mean, you know, ultimately, like you have access to the system as long as you've got an internet connection. Um, so, powerful tool right i don't know interesting stuff let me know what you think like what are you guys doing to to deal with uh the inflation problem <laughs> let me know drop a comment below thanks for tuning in it's been fun uh positive and uplifting as always see you on the next one